Do you want to know a secret? Formula. It is a noun which refers into mathematical relationships or rules expressed in symbols. It usually connects two or more quantities with an equal sign. Wait! In this video, we are going to derive some of them. Let's do this! This is the secret formula where we are going to derive some of the most common formulas in mathematics. Or better yet, let's call this the secret in the formula. What formula are we going to derive on this video? Slot machine, go! We are going to talk about the law of zero exponent, stating that any term expressed with an exponent of zero is equal to one. And how is this possible? This video captures one of the competencies in the K-12 curriculum guide which states that students should be able to derive the laws of exponents. To start off, let us have this pretest. Number 1. In the given expression a to the power of m equals n, which is considered as the exponent? a. Is it the variable a? b. Is it m? c. Is it a to the power of m or d, n? You have 5 seconds to answer this. Time is up. Question number 2. Which law of exponent is used to show the proof of the law of zero exponent. Is it A, the division law of exponents? B, the multiplication law of exponents? C, the law of negative exponents? Or letter D, the power law of exponents? Five seconds. Time is up. Please take note of your answers as we are going to verify them later. Question number 3. In a rational expression, if the numerator is a to the power of m, then what should the denominator be for the whole expression be equal to 1? A. Is it A? B. Is it M? C. Is it a to the power of m? Or letter D, is it m to the power of a? You have 5 seconds for this. Go! Okay, time is up. Let's have item number 4. Which of the following expressions below is equal to 1. Is it a k to the power of 0? b is it the expression of 5p q cubed to the power of 0? or c is it 3 times m to the power of 0 minus 2? or is it d all of this? And the last pre-test question goes, which of the following expressions has the largest value? Is it A, the quantity of 2x raised to 0 minus 2? Or B, 2 times x to the power of 0 minus 2? C, 2 minus the quantity of 2x raised to 0? Or letter D, 2 minus 2 times x to the power of 0? Time is up. We could also use these guide questions for us to understand this video better. Number one, what is this formula all about? Number two, which math concept is this formula based on? Three, 
How was the math concept used in the derivation? And number four, what reasoning procedure created the formula? Now, let's go to the content of this video. Let's talk about what is this formula all about. The formula that we are concerned on for this video is the law of zero exponent. This law tells us that for every expression, a to the power of zero will always be equal to one. This variable a could take any type of coefficients or expression. It could be a constant like 3, negative 8, 1 half pi square root of 5. This a could also be considered as a variable. It could be the variable x, y, or cd. Aside from being a constant or a variable, we could also use an exponentiation for this variable a, just like what is listed below. And finally, this variable A could also represent a combination of terms separated by addition or subtraction. The law of zero exponent tells us that no matter what would be the representation of variable A, if we are going to raise all of them to a power of zero, regardless if it's a constant, a variable, an exponentiation or a combination of terms when raised to the power of zero it will always result to one next on is to look into which math concept this formula is based on The mathematical basis of the law of zero exponent is another law of exponent which is specifically the division law or the quotient rule. This law or rule tells us that if we are dividing expressions with the same basis A, there will be a unique process as to what will happen to the exponents of both expressions. But first, let us differentiate them. The exponent M is the exponent of or the coefficient of the numerator and exponent n is the exponent of the coefficient on the denominator and going back to the expression since both expressions in the numerator and the denominator has the same variable a the division law allows us to simply copy the same base and then subtract the exponents in this manner Another math basis for this formula is the concept of 1 as a fraction. Whenever we have a number, we could always make it into 1 by dividing by the same number, just like 5 divided by 5. If we have another expression, which is negative 3, to make it 1, we simply divide it with the same value. Same as through, if it's a variable, simply divide the same so that we could get 1 as a fraction. This is also true even if you have an exponentiation, a to the power of m, divide the same expression to get 1. And even if your expression looks like this, simply copy that, make that as your denominator, and you will have the same value of 1. This will only happen if the value of the numerator is equal to the value in the denominator or vice versa. All of these things will be considered as we show the proof for the law of zero exponent. Here comes the trick in finding the formula. Here, we are going to show that 1 will be equal to any expression raised to the power of 0. 
in this case, we are going to show that we could get 1 from a to the power of 0 as a general form for any expression with a 0 exponent. Let us try to copy this 1 at the bottom and let us try to express this as a fraction. Earlier, we could express this as a fraction when the numerator and the denominator will be the same. And since we're talking about exponentiation, let's use a to the power of m over a to the power of m. Then, we apply here the division law or the quotient rule for this expression, where we copy the same variable a, and then we subtract the exponents of the numerator, and then the denominator. In short, we'll have m minus m. Again, we simply use the concept of 1 as a fraction and a division law and the quotient rule. Here comes the secret for this given law or formula. Notice that when we have m minus m, we are subtracting the same numbers, it will automatically result to a value of 0. Hence, our final expression would be a to the power of 0. Looking into the endpoints of this process, we could simply show that we have reached our intended output. Let's try to erase everything, interchange both sides by the use of symmetric property, and instead of an arrow, let's try to put equality. This shows that any expression raised to the power of 0 will be equal to 1. This is the law of 0 exponent, which states that for any a with exponent 0, it will always be equal to 1. Let's try to simplify these 5 items below. a is where a to the power of 0, automatically it's 1. b, we are raising x squared to the power of 0, that's 1. c, 8x squared but raised to the power of 0, still 1. Letter D, even if our expression is a binomial expression, but still raised to the power of 0, it will always be equal to 1. Now, let's look at letter E. Letter E has an expression or a constant just outside the exponentiation of exponent 0. This constant, which is 8, will no longer be subjected to an exponent of 0. Hence, it will retain as 8 itself. What will happen now is for the expression x squared, which is raised to the power of 0, it will become 1. So the expression now will not be equal to 1, but it's actually the product of the constant 8, which is just outside it, and 1, which is the simplified form of the expression x squared raised to the power of 0. This is one of those times where you will get a result which is not equal to 1. This is again brought with the constant which is located or situated outside the exponentiation of exponent 0. The final answer for letter E is just 8. Now, let us revisit the pretest questions as our post-test. Number 1. In the expression a to the power of m equals n, which is considered as the exponent? a. Is it a? b. Is it m? c. Is it a to the power of m? Or letter d. Is it n? 5 seconds. Time is up. Question number two. Which law of exponent is used to show the proof of the law of zero exponent? Is it A, the division law of exponents? B, 
the multiplication law of exponents. C. The law of negative exponents. Or letter D. The power law of exponents. Go! Now on number 3. In a rational expression, if the numerator is a to the power of m, then what should the denominator be for the whole expression be equal to 1? Is it a? a, b, m, c, a to the power of m, or letter d, m to the power of a? 5 seconds. Time is up. We are almost done with our post test. Two more questions. Here comes question number four. Which of the following expressions below is equal to one? Is it A, k to the power of zero? B, is it the quantity 5p q cubed raised to zero? C, is it a three? times m to the power of 0 minus 2, or letter D, all of these. Time is up. Last question for our hostess. This is question number 5. Which of the following expressions has the largest value? Is it A? The expression of the quantity 2x raised to 0 minus 2? Or B, is it 2 times x to the power of 0 minus 2? C, is it 2 minus the quantity 2x raised to 0? Or letter D, is it 2 minus 2 times x to the power of 0? Time is up. With your answers, I wish that you comment it in our comment section. Example, A, 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 if that is the set of your answers. This has been another episode for the secret in the formula, mainly concerned with the law of zero exponent, which is actually telling us that any expression raised to the power of zero will always be equal to one. For more videos, scan this QR code here or visit the YouTube channel for other series. Thank you for your time. See you soon. Goodbye, everyone.